Hello, beautiful friends on this beautiful cosmic day. This is really amazing to be here with you once again, co-creating these beautiful harmonious frequencies of our loving hearts. And just being in a collective where actually I really like what my guides told me to do, and that is to do events without video for anyone and just be here with frequencies, be here with energies to relax deeper into actually our hearts that lead us to our souls, that lead us to the absolute. And so we focus within and in this world, right, that's something that uh, not everybody does, focusing within, focusing on energy. And so let's say that we all go within and we find bliss, joy, happiness, and maybe some of us don't. But because we are together, focusing around the world, actually twice a day, that's quite amazing, we surely generate a lot of blissful energies for everyone who can then be uplifted as well. So it's the power of an amazing collective that is so harmonious. And so this is an image that was given to me, and I don't mean like given to me by someone, but actually by the angels. And this is a very long time ago. I was working for the government in Berlin. And if you're familiar with Berlin, so you have East Berlin, West Berlin, and you know, they are connected by the beautiful Brandenburg Tor, the beautiful gate, the portal. <laughs> and so the government buildings are all around um, this beautiful portal. And so I got to work there and sit there during my lunch break and meditate. And so I was meditating one day and I was actually facing the American embassy, sitting on a bench, you know, this is how you don't forget things. And I was just meditating. I had my eyes closed. I tried to meditate the whole lunch break every day. And suddenly I really, you know, through the meditation, you get to see into other realms, of course. And I was surrounded by so many beautiful beings. We can call them angelic beings. And they said, we want you to create an image. And I'm not a graphic designer. I'm also not in any way, you know, talented when it comes to drawings, but they gave me exactly what it should look like. And this was somewhere around the year 2007, I think, so quite a long time ago, when not many people were even speaking about Ascension, but they were quite specific. They said, this is what it needs to look like. And I, of course, didn't have any tools on me except for, you know, pen and paper in my bag that I had with me. So I started to draw exactly how they wanted it. So I got back to the office and uh, I send it the little drawing to my friend in Paris, who is a designer. And I said, Titi, you need to make this beautiful earth because I saw that one day the earth will be beamed with energy from outer space and there will be so many forces around the earth and they will be just sending so much light and creating loving energies around the earth and humanity will be transforming and so he started to work on it then he sent it back to me and the angels were like no 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 that's not it it needs to be different and so they made some improvements send it back to titi and second try this came into being and this is an image you know i always say anyone who wants to use it please use it i don't have any ownership in any of these things but uh, i actually have seen other people using it which is great uh, this is truly what we are going through as humanity this is what the planet is going through. She's being truly surrounded by so much light, more and more and more and more and more and more. And it is always the law of the universe, the law of cosmos, the law of galaxy that allows certain things and certain things simply are not possible just because the energy is not there. So think about for example, how we missed the shift of the ages in the past because simply the energy was not available for the shift of the ages. You cannot just, you know, violently take something and push through, right? It would break the pattern, the patterns. It would break even the web of life. So it's like everything is cosmic nature, cosmic nature is exactly we can study her here we have a version of cosmic nature on this planet it is the planetary nature 
it is not the full-blown cosmic nature but we can kind of you know at least get a little taste of what nature is and what nature actually does so you take a seed you cannot turn it into a redwood by forcing it so a planetary ascension functions the same way or works the same way you cannot just take a planet and put the planet into the higher realms of so much light where everyone would just burn down nervous system would collapse right when it's not ready it's not ready so this is so beautiful to think about it in terms of ascension is a natural process the same like a seed needs to sprout when the conditions are right it's not going to happen in the middle of the winter for most plants and so everything is about cosmic nature and her intelligence as she manifests through all worlds that are of nature so when you think about your own physicality your physicality is it the most important thing in the world well it's not but it is the second most important thing in the world in this world is to be in a body that can allow the intensity of your spirit and then also of the energies of your soul of your christ self of your of course divine self to come down and to be expressed as your luminosity so the body you know i always say number one is your divinity manifesting your divinity number two creating conditions within the body where divinity can be expressed because without the body you're not here <laughs> without your body you, you know like different types of bodies the bodies allow us to actually express our divinity in all worlds that require some kind of form and as we spoke yesterday about also the worlds that require no form where we dissolve into nothingness and everythingness and that is a world of the absolute and the infinite and so it's kind of fun to think about how our body is a tool for expressing our divinity and it doesn't mean that it has to look good that's really you know not where we find divinity in the good looks that's the most deceiving thing of course but it's about energetics how well have we opened the channels that are the subtle channels within the body so it's not about being small big beautiful ugly old young none of that it's actually about are the energetic channels of the physical form clean and open to channel your divinity and usually i have it channels is through actually incredible feelings of happiness bliss the biochemistry of the body is blissing out when consciousness is flowing through this all of course is what we would call for example for me it is Tao, Taoism, the true teachings of divine mother so beautifully coded into the Tao De Ching that's why, for example, Qigong is opening up the channels. You are opening up the channels, moving the energy, allowing cosmos to flow through you fully and completely. What does it create? It creates well-being. It also creates being instead of thinking. The human person actually is very unnatural at the moment has been very unnatural for so long and that's why humanity has problems you know i was thinking about what god showed or creator showed that this world it's almost like it was weird seeing well it's kind of exciting there's so much going on here and there's there's action here there's change here this world is so changeable but does it mean that the world has to actually be filled with suffering no changeable world can be so much fun if we just understand that change right can always be positive it doesn't have to be like you know we have we don't have to kill each other for for action to be here action can be positive action it's so interesting i was driving this morning i just got back home and as i was driving i was really in my head thinking a lot about this experience in the solar world how this world is supposed to be fun it's supposed to be fun to, to have change. It's supposed to be fun to have fast pace, to have this truly what I would call the action ability. And then I was thinking, but that, that doesn't mean it has to be painful. It doesn't mean that it has to be suffering and struggle. And then in front of me was a big truck and it just says imperfect world. 
but it was like some company selling something i don't know what but i thought oh imperfect world is exciting because you can make it more and more and more and more and more perfect so it requires a process it is the beautiful process of making perfect worlds and then when you're done making a perfect world it's like playing with lego and you've done it it's it's there you built it everything is done you cannot improve upon it so you want to find another imperfect world so that you can have fun again so that you can go through the process of change and transformation so to me this was like the answer to my question and hopefully that makes sense as well that imperfect world doesn't mean painful right it just means i made a painting and i think i can do better that's it i made a sculpture it's it's fine but i know i can do better and so this is the way that maybe it's my invitation for all of us to see the world through the eyes like this that you know perfection would be boring and maybe it's not even exciting to already always have perfection of all things because i personally like the process of transformation i get excited when actually we can take something and heal it transform it make it better and keep improving it's like having a beautiful garden right and you improve if you like gardening right you just keep putting more beautiful flowers in and you keep planting some new trees until you have a jungle that you love and so this is where it gets so exciting so one thing divine mother always told me that suffering and pain were not part of her original design of this world but matter was part of her design maybe not exactly the way we perceive it today and so yesterday on the call in the afternoon actually we mentioned something that we didn't mention on the earlier call and that is that we as humanity are not in a trap by matter matter was supposed to be cool matter was supposed to be how the five elements manifest into such incredible piece of art and so it was meant to be like fun let's build those sculptures let create into matter i mean that is as tangible as this gets it's not subtle realms you can touch it you can smell it you can feel it the five senses originally were actually an amazing adventure originally because originally we had freedom we had freedom from our art meaning when we created something we didn't desire it we didn't hold on to it we didn't hoard it we didn't try to sell it you know we didn't get addicted to it we didn't want to grab it we didn't want to abuse it but of course through the fall of consciousness into complete unconsciousness what happened that matter became something that humanity got truly trapped by not because matter is bad but because the relationship became very toxic it became completely reversed instead of being the artists who completely with freedom and skill create into matter and then look at it and say ah oh, creation creation and this amazing dimension of matter how cool is that that's very cool and then letting go letting go was the key because knowing that it's creation you don't want to hold on to it you adore it and let go and so of course then what happened into unconsciousness but all this is part of our ascension that's actually we are going back into the right relationship with matter we are spiritualizing our relationship with matter thank you we are actually spiritualizing matter again to be the five elements that turn into beautiful matter how amazing is that and so think of yourself in this world as an artist who is constantly invited to improve upon without hating anything without disliking something the likes and dislikes that's also you know part of actually the big trap the likes and dislikes we often speak about the likes and dislikes if i like this then there is something i must dislike and actually the path of christ consciousness within us is the path of power and that power is ultimately love and when we walk upon this planet we walk with the power of love 
and everything else, the dualities dissolve. And so we are actually in our center, in our oneness, oneness, not exactly oneness with what is around us. And at the same time, yes, but it's the oneness of our own being. We no longer are a split being, split into our own likes and dislikes. We become whole again when we can be centered in our all love. That is true mastery. That is what, for example, Tao Te Ching is all about when you study it deeply through this lens of knowing what it is all about that the Tao speaks about. So it's the master being is the one that is absolutely in the middle, but in a powerful way. This is not a weak place to be. It's actually the most powerful place to be is that ultimate powerful love that pierces through the veil of the illusion that something was preference on one side and then the other side and that they were not equal. And so it was the pushing and pulling that was creating <laughs> this is a cool image I got all of this from Divine Mother and so as long as it's this pushing and pulling we cannot actually achieve our true mastery that's why you can imagine what it is when one is whole within themselves and it is all love and incredible power to actually cause change so the pushing and pulling is not the great way to cause change because it will again leave it will lead to a collapse it always creates is creates imbalance but when we step into our heart when we open actually this incredible portal of love we become incredibly magnetic and this magnetism emanates from our chest much more than even you see here in this picture the magnetism of our heart i only got to see it truly with my eyes uh, just a few months ago when I was going through an incredible experience and it was on August um, during the Lionsgate and so I could see the power of this magnetic field the power of the magnetic field is our true power it is the power of love it is not about sending love I always say you know nice but how about being this magnetic power of love and so um, how do we get there so first of all most people look very depleted energetically even if they don't feel tired but there is a depletion of magnetism there is a depletion when there is unconsciousness and the biggest depletion comes from living in the first three lower chakras and identifying with them only but the power can be unlocked when we actually step into the heart center so stepping into the heart center is the key every day am i in love with life if so hooray and if I don't feel in love with life, obviously I need something to get me to love life fully and completely beyond all circumstances. And that, of course, is not easy for the human being of this time and space because we've learned to be so conditional, so conditional, constantly having preferences. I feel happy when I'm rich. I only feel happy when I'm healthy. I only feel happy when I have a relationship like this and that. And so, you know, we created those right and wrong conditions. And so again, those are not sustainable because what happens when the conditions are lost, then our joy is also lost. Sorry, I don't know where I lost the image, but that's okay. So again, this is not the powerful way to be, but the powerful way to be is the one in the middle, to be so centered in your divine consciousness, which cannot be something we just you know, think it has to be who we become so that it emanates around us so that our electromagnetic field is whole and our magnetism is complete so that we have the beautiful apple of life all around us. And so despite all conditions that are the manifestations of our past, it is a piece of art that we created that we call our life. Life with a small L. This life, as you know, is not exactly eternal. It is the come and go, but it is a piece of art. We are all artists here. People say we are creators, yes. And so what is the creation? It is the art we gift the world. It is actually our own life. It is our existence even though it's so temporary but that is actually our creation so what are we creating 
And when we step into the love and truly activate that love center within us, we create immense power within us and around us. And it gives us also higher consciousness, which to me is the only answer to all the conditions here on this planet. All conditions that we see in this world have been created by the illusion of actually living in the first three lower chakras that were kind of possessed. And we were possessed internally by our own three lower chakras. That means identification with the body, looking in the face and saying, oh, you woman, you man, you are 40, you 60, you old, you young, you pretty, you ugly, all of it. You healthy, you sick. So that's the first chakra where the life force was so trapped when the life force started to move a little bit, it would go into the second chakra, creating some kind of emotion. Maybe good, maybe bad, but emotion. I believe my emotions or not. And then going to the third chakra and creating the incredible, unbelievable, unnatural thinking mind. The thinking mind, the trap of the third dimension and the third chakra, thinking, thinking, thinking and thinking and not very reli reliably just thinking not very easy to stop the thinking but preventing us from rising into our hearts where we actually be being the heart is the one that knows the heart is the one that be that's the beingness the isness being in the heart and that's where things get really cool and we get really so much more truly centered and it's our own transcendence you see and then it just rises and rises and rises and that's where we get our true power so the true power cannot be found in the first three lower chakras but it is always found heart and above and so being in love with life the capital l is the key divine mother always made a difference between life with a small l and life with a capital l and so we want to be in love with life with a capital L fearlessly. Fear is the first three lower chakras. Love is four and above. It only gets better. And so how do we fall in love with life? And so Divine Mother said, what is there not to love? Just look around the beautiful trees, the birds the insects the fluffy animals the beautiful elements nature that is so easy to love and so i have met some people in my life who said i'm not a nature person and i thought huh that's so interesting for the human condition to ever think that anyone is not a nature person who are we without nature we are nothing and no one, empty shells, completely disconnected from intelligence if we are not beings of nature. And so nature is the book of life. There is so much to love. And actually, when you study something like ecotherapy, which I think is becoming more and more popular. So in the field of psychology, taking people to nature is actually incredibly healing. And the body itself is a receiver of nature. And so when we attune to nature, whether it is the nature that we have here in this world or nature that is actually so much more than that, and it's the cosmic nature, when we attune to her and listen deeply in our meditation, because that's the only way to listen, right, is to be completely in the heart and quiet, then she speaks and then she reveals and then she shows us the way and then she heals the body. She heals all that needs to be healed by her love, just surrendering to her. You know, and she actually always is communicating with you. As I'm speaking here, a little hummingbird came to the window and they only do it when they truly want to confirm that what is being said here is something that nature actually agrees with. And so here we are in the presence of a little hummingbird, which of course is an expression of Divine Mother. And so what does nature do too? She has sacred sound. And not only the sound that we know as listening deeply to nature, and you can imagine what happens to people when they live in a city. They are so actually harmed all the time, right? Because there's so much noise, there's no nature very often, not much of it. And so this is the return to nature. We must, as human beings, understand that nature actually is the most valuable attribute of our divinity. 
in this world and then through her we connect in our own harmony with the higher aspects of cosmic nature all the way to cosmic consciousness of course but nature cannot be underestimated she cannot be diminished in this world because then everybody just becomes stupid and we call them intellectual maybe then that's even more dangerous and so because nature also has a sound when i travel out of body i get to hear the sound of nature and i mean cosmic nature when you travel out of body you have more senses and then you start hearing things that you normally don't hear which is so incredible you start smelling things that normally you don't smell and so nature actually gave us many more senses than we use in this world of course and so for example when you go out of body you start hearing sacred sounds you start hearing sacred harmonies beautiful music and not just music but also chanting and so today we will dedicate uh, the rest of this event to actually chanting and so some of the chants you know uh, I mainly received all my knowledge or the, all, all that I share from Yogananda, Divine Mother, but also Divine Father recently. But I also met an amazing being that I, many of you have worked with and work with now through, you know, this beautiful interconnectedness. And that is, I will call him Swami Kaleshwar. So some people even say that Kaleshwar is or was the reincarnation of Yogananda. And again, whether that is so or not, I don't know. It's not information I received directly, but uh, I heard that from his students. And so if it is so, I would believe it though, because I've seen both of them, both Yogananda and both Swami Kaleshwar come actually from Shiva. I saw the face of Shiva one day I had a few visitations from Shiva, the gypsy, he called himself. And so suddenly his face was like releasing the face of Yogananda. And then it was releasing the face of Kaleshwar. And so Kaleshwar, he came to me several times. It's not often at all, but he, when he came, he came in a powerful way. And he was always delivering mainly what people call a transmission of energy. And so, you know, through a hug, he would transmit energy, but also had some also very strange experiences where he would be, you know, really working on my physical body, attuning my structure and my brain and my skull to actually higher and cosmic consciousness. And so it's kind of, you know, where my relationship with him is. And I introduced, I think, all of you, many of you to the wonderful teacher, Alex Aderman, who runs the Baba Kitchen in LA and also the Divine Mother Center with Monica. And I know you, so many of you started to do the mantras and work with them now, which is wonderful. So from all the different mantras, I, you know, learned some of them, some of them I use, some of them I don't. But one day, Kaleshwar uh, actually explained to me the power of two mantras, which are the ones I now use every single day and I been using them every single day and so um, those I would like to share I also ask Alex if I can share them and we, if we can use them anytime we want and we can so that's really great so the way that I see this I'm I was able to see what mantras do in a whole new way um, through meditation and that is that around the human world and around the human being there are layers upon layers upon layers of what I would call a sediment. And the sediment is all the negative thoughts, all the crazy emotions sometimes, and all the attachments and the unconsciousness and the illusions and all of it. It looks like sediments, like when you look at a rock. And so when I was seeing it, I was actually chanting mantras. I was doing uh, all the mantras with Kaleshwar. And suddenly I saw how every time you utter these sacred syllables, then it's like shooting actually, and uh, it's like drilling actually through these sediments and drilling what people call channels, but I would also call it a tunnel and kind of drilling through until you have tunnels. And when you have enough tunnels, it all cracks open and the whole structure just crumbles. And so that's liberation, liberation from karmic patterns. 
And I didn't do exactly the five elements that many of you have done, but I have a practice where I chant every day and the mantra that I chant every day, I will chant it with you exactly the way that it was given to me, which doesn't mean that it's exactly the way that Kaleshwar taught it to his students, but it is the sky mantra. This is a sky mantra, so for the element of sky, of cosmos, but it's also Shiva mantra. And this mantra, I chanted several times a day and especially in the morning for quite a bit. I was told to chant it in a very specific way. And if you are studying with either Monica or you're studying with Alex, then you know that this mantra creates what they call circles of angelic energy all around you and it creates miracles and this one can be just chanted anytime you want as long as you want no need to repeat a specific time so there is you know a lot of freedom with this mantra which i love now this i was told to always chant it with a huge smile no matter what and especially when, let's say, the circumstances of, for example, the little personal life or even the circumstances of the world make you feel like you don't want to be smiling, then I was told to crack the code. And cracking the code, of course, is what we call the fool in the archetypes of, for example, the 22 archetypes that we work with in this world. The fool is the one who smiles and laughs no matter what. And there is such huge, as you can imagine, power in doing so. Let's say that a person is sick. It would be natural to feel really down about it. But what about if we start laughing and smiling to crack the code and to do something so unusual and then chant a mantra that creates circles of angelic protection, connects us to Shiva and to cosmic consciousness. Can you imagine the power of this? And so I learned to do this every single day, no matter what. Smile really huge. Exaggerate your smile when you chant this mantra. And you can do a few minutes of it as, as much as you feel like. Om Lingasakam Yidum Punyam Yahpate Shiva Sanidho, Shiva Loka Mavapnoti, Shivena Sahamogate. So, take a screenshot if you don't have it. You can find it online as well. Uh, it is freely available also to download as audio, but also I will play it here, sung by Swami Kaleshwar himself. But let's try it together, okay? The translations to me are not important at all. And don't worry about translating anything because we are talking cosmic language, cosmic syllables, cosmic spells, cosmic magic that cracks the code. You know, to me, like trying to translate it is trying to actually diminish it even. We don't want to diminish it. We want to take it as it is. And so is everyone smiling? Put a big smiley face on the chat, everyone smiling. I'm going to find Kalashwar, who's going to chant it with us here. And what I did, I created an audio for myself, which is 30 minutes of Sky Mantra, so that I can place 30 minutes when I'm driving. Great, we have a lot of smiley faces, so really big smile, no matter what. Make that smile so huge and let us chant while smiling crazy big. Om Linga Sakam Nidam Punyam Yah Pate Shiva Sannidho Shiva Loka Mavapnoti Shivena Sahamogate Om Linga Sakam Nidam Punyam Yah Pate Shiva Sannidho Shiva Loka Mavapnoti Shivena Sahamogate Om Linga Sakam Nidam Punyam Yah Pate Shiva Sannidho Shiva Loka Mavapnoti Shivena Sahamogate Okay, 
smile as big as you can and even like you know i like to engage this passion and i promise you that if you practice smiling huge no matter what and chanting this mantra you will not only have a fabulous time suddenly but you crack the code of the energy yeah and this is all about energetics so right if i'm in a depleted state for some reason i'm looking at the piece of art that is my life and i don't like it well i need to stop paying attention to that and instead i want to go into my mantra where i'm smiling so big even if i'm crying i'm smiling big and i even you know use my hands and kind of turn it into a little dance and then after a few minutes your magnetism is back and of course if your magnetism is back your life is back in a whole new way so this is my morning practice and you know morning practice is the key is truly setting the tone of your to your life you will feel energized you will feel optimistic you will feel so much more soul power divine power it is like a dialing a phone number it is a key code to higher realms where this energy is available to you it's really amazing and so again learn to smile and when you drive if you drive or if you you know take public transport you can have it you know in your phone and you can listen to it with your headphones and smile and chant be the magical fool who doesn't believe the reality as is but who is constantly in a magical relationship with matter which means matter is the result of your thinking feeling singing smiling yes and so this is a great technology doesn't shiva has a very nice back <laughs> adoring shiva's butt cheeks <laughs> and so okay so that's one mantra so you know if you don't have a morning practice create one create one that you love it is the moment you wake up the moment you wake up sets the tone for the rest of the day and every day is a solar day there is no such thing as monday sunday nothing every day is a solar day of new energy new energy so what is the energy of the day we want to ride with that energy and so this this is a beautiful way you know to play it on your phone while you're getting ready for the day sing along i always recommend chanting om in your shower if you take long showers chant some oms and they are part of this mantra so you can play the mantra while you are in the shower and just sing along and just make yourself super super happy for the day the true happiness so <clears throat> to me a morning practice takes you know maybe an hour maybe two as much time as you have but it definitely needs to be something we cannot just be the old you know human being that was here yesterday if we don't change we just repeat the same the same the same it gets really boring but we want to be cracking the code of our own being so that we can get to our highest potential and the highest potential is just an illusion anyway because then we can keep going we keep going but at least getting to cracking the code opening up uh, the possibilities that are within us so the next mantra the way that it came to me is very interesting actually <clears throat> You will recognize it if you have been studying with Swami Galeshwar. Uh, but some of you, a few of you came with me together. It was we went to the Divine Mother Center. And that is here in California, Northern California. Alex Aderman is in LA, so Southern California. And so we went to the Divine Mother Center for some fire pujas. It was really wonderful. And I had a little crystal in a po in pocket with me. And what I like to do when you have a crystal and put it on these sacred grounds put it on these sacred spots and let the crystal absorb and record the energy of these special places and so it was not a great crystal it was kind of cracked but it was fine it's all i had in my pocket so i 
put it on the ground at the Divine Mother Center every time we went for a few days. So it was recording the energy where Swami Kaleshwar actually walked. And so if you are like me, you like to sleep with your crystals and have your bed full of stuff that you can grab at night and play with. And so I grabbed my crystal in the middle of the night and I was just holding the crystal thinking about Swami. And suddenly I heard his singing and I thought, what is he singing? And so I started to repeat what he was saying, singing. And then it ended up being this mantra that is known to be by his students as the karma and block, like internal blockages, washing mantra. And so thanks to Alex, I now have the transcript of the mantra. And she told me it comes from actually his Jesus book. And so I also, thanks to Alex, have the recording of Swami. And so the crystal recorded this mantra and then passed it on. And I thought, this is amazing. So this mantra to me is now the mantra that will continue with us into this ascension process every single day. And I believe even the Divine Mother Center now recommend that people sing it at least 10 minutes a day just to move through all remaining karmic patterns and, and if there are any blockages within the human instrument, whether it is emotional, mental or physical, to actually remove all these blocks and wash it all out. And so the pronunciation is a little bit different from what it looks like here in transcript. And again, we will play it. But this is the way that I hear it. Om, I do anadi, janga mudarni, raksha 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 mam. Om Aidu Anadi Janga Muderni Raksha Raksha Rakshamam. And so again, we'll go to Swami and see how he would pronounce it. So again, I created a little loop. Uh, so it's Karma Washing Block Mantra. And again, 10 minutes a day if you have the time. Again, you could be washing the dishes. That's kind of funny to think about it because you're washing your karma, washing the dishes, and you're chanting your mantra. So Om Aidu Anadi Janga Mudharani Raksha Raksha Rakshamam 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 Om So, um, I actually don't know if there is a link to this or not. I got it from Alex and I think Alex teaches some classes with the mantra. Divine Mother Center also teach the mantra. So it will be part of this. I will ask Alex if I can share the recording and if I can, then I will, but otherwise it's going to be posted like this on YouTube as part of this video. So what is the power of mantras? Why sing a mantra and why some might be powerful and some not so powerful? So from my own experience, story, um, you know, we have a lot of memories inside of us that maybe just keep arising in us until it all makes sense. But when I was a very young teenager, I had that huge passion for meditation and for, you know, chanting. So I was chanting, chanting mantras from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And I really had no idea what I was doing. I just had no idea. But I just knew that I wanted to chant as a teenager, <laughs> as a 13 year old. And so I was sitting in my bed, I was just chanting, chanting, chanting. And suddenly, and the way that I describe it is always the same way, a tornado came through the top of my crown, moved through the entire spine, unplugged something and pulled the entire being of this person that I am and beyond out of the body, but not at all the way that you would, you know, do like out of body travel. This was a complete <laughs> out of body, the body itself was no longer my body. And so 
I no longer identified in any way. I was confused why the body was so small for a being like us that is so huge, right? We are huge beings. And that was the mantra. And so, of course, this beautiful divine feminine being was like, oops. And whoever she was, she sent me right back with some information, but right back. So that was one power of mantra I learned very early on. Later, in early 20s, I was chanting with a friend. I had this CD that I talked about before with Henry Marshall, and he had mantra one, mantra two. <laughs> so I, I don't know which CD this was, but we were just sitting every night and we were just chanting together. And it was um, one of the beautiful, I believe it was Lakshmi mantra. And so we're just chanting, chanting. I had no idea why we're doing it, but it's just, you know, internal kind of like, let's do it, let's chant. And so we chanting away every night for a few days. And suddenly it was like, if you ever had any wound inside of you and it was still within you, this mantra cracked through every wound. It cracked so powerfully that it was like cracking a walnut in the heart. And it made a sound and it had a shooting pain in a good way though. It was releasing all wounding and it shot into my shoulder and my heart was liberated from all wounds. And I mean, you know, in your early 20s, you already probably had some parenting stuff going on and who knows what. So every wound was completely cracked open and deleted by this mantra. Now, the rippling effect of that on my life personally is still happening right now and I don't chant the mantra anymore but from that one mantra and this is decades and decades unfortunately <laughs> or fortunately who knows how it all works for decades this mantra has been affecting my life still from that one day when it cracked all the wounds open and deleted them can you imagine the power of just one mantra? And then we have a lot of mantras that already are created by humanity and they don't come from these higher realms. They are much more the words, the Sanskrit words that someone put together and that they can be easily translated. And so, you know, they are nice, but we want to go to the powerful ones. Here, Om, every single day, at least, three arms with your pure intention to connect with the divine so if you want to live a life that you love very little to be invested in it really om and if some mantra even if it's just om that alone will make a huge difference but of course we want to take it to the next to the next and to the next because why not we are here to actually remember our power and to feel empowered to actually be the artists we came here to be, which means we over matter. Our lives over matter and matter being our friend that responds to our consciousness. As long as we are suffering, right, then probably suffering causes more suffering. When there is in harmony, disharmony within us, it creates this harmony outside of us. If there is illusion within us, we will have illusion on the outside of us too. So how do we every day do our best to be above our own illusion? And these mantras can really help you. Let me see if I still have the mantra because I was trying to get it back, the one that completely healed the heart. And so the only thing is that I think, you know, YouTube is quite strict with actually putting anything in the video, right, when it's copyrighted. So I'll play it. And actually, if you want, record it on your phone. I'm, I'm going to actually first find it. Let me find it. And so Lakshmi. Okay, I found it. So... <clears throat> If you want to get your phone ready, you can record it. I don't mind at all, but it is from Mantras, actually three, Little Bit of Heaven by Henry Marshall from 1998. And so I'm going to pause recording. 
again. And so I see that you can find the mantra actually on YouTube. So once again, it is Om Shreem Maha Lakshmi Lakshmi Yeh. And it just brings great, it says it's for wealth, but to me wealth is the wealth of love, the wealth of goodness within us, the wealth of joy and optimism. And so it is again, Henry Marshall, Little Bit of Heaven, and the album was called Mantras Three. So this mantra, again, very powerful and very fun. When we look at the divine beings, for example, like Yogananda, they found a way to live and it was not a mediocre way to live it was not a boring way to live it was not on repeat but it was mastery and in this lifetime you and me came here for this mastery to live like angels in a way to have fun to play to be powerful and to really walk on water in this world to have magic wands, to wave them, to be a little bit like fairies as well, and maybe a little bit of a troublemaker too, because that too is part of how to actually be in this world and not of this world. In a most wonderful, playful way, of course, and to be the change maker. And so that's why we have these great beings like Yogananda or Swami Kalishwar. They showed us how to have fun and how to live and how to truly be masterful. And so how will this keep unfolding, this lunar cycle? So it was funny. Uh, I think Serena yesterday sent me a video of Matthias De Stefano, which was a newly posted video where he was speaking about how the calendar is completely nonsensical, how humanity is disconnected from nature, from the intelligence. And that's pretty much what's going on truly in this um, in this ascension cycle and so our purpose is to become more and more natural natural <laughs> but i mean not like what people call the dirty hippie kind of natural but actually to be the angelic being natural that nature the divine nature the one that is attuned to all of divine nature through the portal of this nature <laughs> and so yes we become tree huggers again and yes we represent consciousness that others can see as something very actually effective where they start asking the questions how can you be so happy how can you smile so much how can you walk on water and you say well i've got some mantras for you I'm attuning my consciousness to higher sound of creation. I'm moving through the sediments of all unconsciousness. I'm having fun chiseling through these sediments and I am optimistic. And so that's what we will be doing here. We will be going farther and farther and farther and deeper and deeper and deeper to become more and more real the authentic angelic divine human being we came here to be not in a weak way but in a very powerful way and so what is the number one key and answer and everything is always to feel immense love for the mystery love for the divine love as divine mother says for life with a capital l and so to conclude the last three minutes let us again sing to our beautiful Shiva, our sky father, Shiva. And again, I'll play Kalashvar, but sing with me and smile and laugh and dance. Let me find it. Again, this one we can record into the video. So that's great. Sky Mantra. Here we go. Smiling. I'm smiling with you. Om. Linga sakam nidam punyam Yahpate shiva sannidho Shiva loka mavapnoti Shivena sahamogate Om Linga sakam nidam punyam Yahpate shiva sannidho 
శివలోకమవాప్నోతి శివేన సహమో గతేకం నిదం పుణ్యం యే శివ సన్నిధౌ శివలోకమవాప్నోతి శివేన సహమో గతే And let us wash some karma and even if we don't have any left because divine mother likes to delete our karma by the way but still we can do it for the world the world as we know it still needs some washing and so let's do some washing here Om Aidu Anadi Janga Mudharani రక్ష 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 ఐదు అనాది జంగ ముద్దరణి 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 రక్ష 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 సో రికమెండేషన్ ఓన్లీ చాంట్ వెన్ యూ ఫీల్ లైక్ ఇట్ అండ్ వెన్ యూ ఫీల్ లవ్ టు మీ దట్స్ ది ఎఫెక్టివ్ వే ఆఫ్ చాంటింగ్ if i don't feel like chanting if i find that it is a burden don't chant but chant when you feel like it mhm so if the practice gives you joy and that means maybe you feeling sad but you still love chanting chant but if you hate chanting don't chant because <laughs> the resistance is not beneficial for us right we want to be actually doing what we love as our spiritual practice and uh i did say that divine mother when she enters our being and when she is let in fully she actually deletes all our karma she moves through all the channels in all our earthly bodies that means physical and non-physical mainly non-physical and when we let her in into every channel she is after a called kundalini shakti then she enters and she burns all karma and so it is so for this weekend i actually i'm not quite sure that i will be around to do events but i will post it on the website actually tomorrow morning and i will send an email so i am just not sure just yet because it depends on the weather if we are traveling or not but i will definitely keep you guys posted and so then we would continue our journey and who knows you just never know what happens tonight so the adventures keep going unfolding and growing so thank you so much many blessings and enjoy your mantras bye